Welcome to Online Worship with Madisonville First United Methodist Church. I'm John Cowles, one of the co-lead pastors. And I'm Brandon Buchanan, Director of Media Ministries. Thanks for joining us for worship today. Each Sunday during our time of welcome, we will be exploring the church and showing off some of the different places where worship takes place. Today, we are in the gym where meals and worship moments take place throughout the week. Our hope in doing our new online welcome is to connect you, our online community. We want you to know how important you are, and we hope that this time of greeting will help to connect you to the life of the church. At M1UMC, our mission is to discover persons in need of God's grace, connect them with Jesus and his family, grow them to become devoted followers of Jesus, and send them to serve and share God's love. Each Sunday, we have three in-person services at 9 and 11 a.m. and our multicultural service at 5 p.m. We also have Sunday school at 10 a.m. Throughout our time of welcome, there's been a QR code at the bottom of the screen. You can scan it with your phone's camera app and visit the Discover page on our website. There you can do a few things. You can register your attendance, submit your prayer request, view our newsletter, and if you wish, you can give as well. During our 9 a.m. service, we have the honor of celebrating two baptisms. We are celebrating uh, Callan Croft and Noah Schneider. The United Beth Methodist Book of Worship says, Baptism is God's word to us, proclaiming our adoption by grace, and our word to God, promising our response of faith and love. Baptism anticipates a lifetime of further and deeper experience of God, further acts of Christian commitment in ministries in the world. Take a moment. Write in the comments your blessings for those being baptized today. In a few weeks, I'll be taking a group of people on a history day trip. We'll travel to the Red River Meeting House, the birthplace of the second great awakening. And we'll also visit United Methodist Temple in Russellville, which is a historic sanctuary with beautiful stained glass windows. The history day trip will take place Thursday, August 11th. We'll leave about 9 a.m. and return around two o'clock in the afternoon. Cost for the trip is $20, which includes transportation and lunch. Today at Mar Park, we will host our first churchwide picnic in over two years. It will begin right after service at 1230. We are so excited to see you. Our grill masters are already there cooking and preparing. We hope that you can bring your favorite side dish to share with everyone. And you may also want to bring a lawn chair as well. I'd also like to invite you to join me in September. The church is taking a group down to Guatemala to work with a more agracia school. While we're there, we'll have a few light construction projects that we will help the school complete. We have the opportunity to be the hands and the feet of Christ, to help our neighbors with a pure act of building and providing a need. This trip is set for September 1st through the 6th with an all-included price of $1,300. We'd love for you to join us. If you're interested in serving on this trip, please email me. It's john.cals, K-A-L-Z, at m1umc.org. One of the things I love about our church is that there's a huge heart of service and a deep desire to care for everyone. One of the ways we do this is through our free takeaway meals on Wednesday. Each week, our kitchen ministry feeds 75 to 100 persons in our area. This program is financially supported by Good Samaritan Ministries, a ministry of the Kentucky Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church. If you are in need of a meal or you know someone who could use one, please let us know. Pick up uh, for the meals begins at 530 and goes until we run out for the evening. Staff members and volunteers will be waiting at the door under the awning on Scott Street to bring the meals. With our service about to begin, I want to invite you to grab a few things. Grab a candle and go ahead and light it. In our service, we do this as a reminder of God's presence with us. At this time, Jesus, light of the world, we invite you into this place. While you're at it, Grab your favorite cup of coffee, grab some tea uh, and your Bible, along with a notepad and pen. During the sermon, take notes so you can go deeper in your reflection and look back on those notes later. I also want to challenge you to write your thoughts and prayers in the comments below so we can see how you are doing. Now, as we settle in our, uh, for our time of worship, let's open our hearts to encounter God's word together. And remember this, you, you are, are a, a blessing. blessing.
hand up, greet each other, handshake, fist bump, whatever you're comfortable doing. If you're watching online, make comments in the feed and share the feed if you would. Since we're all standing, I invite you to join me in this historic affirmation of the Christian faith we know as the Apostles' Creed. Please join me, if you would. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. Third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And then he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's worship together in song this morning, Brian. Good morning. It is wonderful to see each and every one of you here this morning, and welcome to those joining us online. Welcome to Madisonville First United Methodist Church. It is time to move into our time of worship, and if you would join us in this first song, Be Thou My Vision, the lyrics should be on the screen for you, but if not, if you'd like to use your hymnal for those here in attendance, it is number 451, 451, Be Thou My Vision. <laughs> Well, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Shining in the light. 
You may be seated. Let's prepare our hearts for prayer this morning as we, uh, as we listen to music this morning and prepare our hearts for that. our hearts together in prayer this morning. God, you are holy. And we want to see you. We want to seek you. Your word says, when we seek you with all of our heart, you'll be found. And we want to walk in the knowledge of your presence with us each and every moment of each and every day. And we want to lift you up above all names. Holy God, the love you have for us overwhelms us. But in spite of our, our human weaknesses and our human failures, you still love us and care for us, and you seek us. Father, may we seek you with all of our heart. We thank you that this morning, once again, you bless us with your presence. May we know your presence this day. 
Holy God, we do celebrate with the families of Callan and Noah this morning as we celebrate the sacrament of holy baptism. Thankful for that Callan is being raised in a home where Christ is glorified. We thank you too for the decision that Noah's made to, to say yes to you, Jesus, and to give his heart to you completely. Thankful for each of them and what they will bring to our, what they bring and what they will continue to bring to our, our congregation. And Father, I thank you for a church, a church family who supports our young people in so, so many ways. We're grateful for that support, and this morning we see evidence of the result of that support. Father, we pray this day many, many things on our hearts. We pray for the mission team, which will go to Guatemala Labor Day weekend. May you, may you already speak to the hearts of those that you want to go as we go and continue the work of Amor de Gracia. And we can continue to pray for the ministry of Amor de Gracia and the children there. So grateful that they're back in the classroom and, and just pour your blessings on that school. We're thankful, too, for the privilege we had of working in Dawson and working in Guatemala this summer. We look forward to celebrating in January all of the missions of our church. And Father, we pray this morning, knowing that, that our prayers don't change you. Our prayers change us. And may they draw us into a deeper relationship with you. For Father, the prayers on our hearts this morning, we lift up to you. As together we pray the prayer that your Son, Jesus Christ, taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we continue to worship, we come to a time of offering. Uh, if you're watching online, there's lots of different options to give. You can check our website for those. You can also mail in or, or drop them by the church as well. But this morning, I invite the ushers to come and receive our tithes and offering this day. Would you pray with me once again? Holy God, we know that truly all we have belongs to you. And you entrust us with those gifts. And you call us to be wise stewards. And this morning as an act of faith and an act of obedience. We return a portion of these gifts to you. And we pray that you will bless these gifts. And they will be used to further the work of your kingdom in this community and beyond. In the holy name of Jesus, we offer our prayers. And God's people said, Amen. Thank you.
Good morning, friends. I'm Megan Brown, the Director of Children's Ministries. And if you're one of my friends that are in elementary school or younger, I'm going to invite you to come forward and sit down on the front pew so you have an extra good seat for what's going to happen. We're very blessed to have so many baptisms happening this month in our church, and so we're glad that you get to come up and see and get to be a part of that. Incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift offered without price. And brothers and sisters, we have the joy to celebrate two baptisms today because in our tradition and the tradition of the New Testament, we baptize people when we welcome them into God's family, when we are initiated in a Christ holy church. So that may be as an infant in a Christian home. It may be later in life when a decision is made to follow Christ. So if those being baptized and those presenting those for baptized will come forward. Today we present for baptism Callan Bruce Croft and Noah Schneider. I'm going to ask these questions to you, Noah, and to you, Daniel and Hillary, as parents of Callan. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sins? So I say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, say, I do. And to Daniel and to Hillary, will you nurture Callan in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself, to profess his faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? If so, say, I will. And to all of you, according to the grace given to you, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representative in the world? If so, say, I will. Friends, remember, baptism, while they're the ones being baptized, this is a church-wide event. I invite you to take an insert in your bulletin and join me in, this, in the uh, Congregational Reaffirmation of Faith. It may also be on the screen. Do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow, and when you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. The children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it, to wash away their sin, clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. All praise to you, Eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ. With you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen.
that one. Cal and Bruce, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray together. Lord, pour out your Spirit on Cal and that he may always be a faithful disciple of yours. Send your Holy Spirit to guide and strengthen him always. These things we ask in our Savior's name. Amen. Amen. All right, Callan, and we want to welcome you to the family of Christ and help you to go see your new family in the church. And so Pastor Yasmel is going to walk you around so that you can see your new family. You're getting passed around, buddy. <laughs> yep. And while he's doing that, if you all want to uh, sing Jesus Loves Me to him while he's doing that. Y'all don't want me to start the singing. Thank you, Spirit's I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong, they are weak but He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes. We're thankful to have Callan as a member of the family of God, and we're thankful for Daniel and Hillary and their commitment to raise him Amen. in the faith. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. No, we're going to use a little more water on you, my friend. So I invite you to come on up here, step on up, and let Ainsley. I'm asking Ainsley and Cameron, our summer interns, to come and to, to be a, to represent you as the congregation uh, this morning. Water's nice and warm, isn't it? Yeah. And you're grateful for that, and we are too. Yeah, yeah. You need your glasses on. Let me take those off. Oh, yeah. 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 No, I've told you this before, and I told the students last week. I'm so proud of the decision you made. Um, when we were in Guatemala a few weeks ago, one of the interns came to me and said, Ken, Noah is the most genuine young person I've ever met. And that speaks volumes about who you are and who you are to other people. And I'm so grateful that you've made a decision to give your heart to Christ completely. We're so grateful for your presence with us and, and the many, many ways you serve him, the, that you served him this summer and you do each and every day. And we celebrate this day with you. And, uh, and I know that you can count on these people to support you and encourage you. And I know you do the same for them. And I also want to give you the heads up that when you come up out of the water, there may be a lot of hoop and hollering going on, so I don't want you to be shocked by it, okay? And those are hoop, that's hoop and holler celebration because, Noah, we love you deeply. And we're so grateful for your presence with us. As Noah, this day I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. May the Holy Spirit work within you that being born of the water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Would you pray with me? Holy God, I thank you so much for Noah Schneider. I thank for the young man he is. I thank for the heart that he has for you. I'm thankful for the decision he's made this day. And I pray that you will continue to bless him, that he will continue to have a heart to seek you with all of his being. And as always, I'm thankful for the congregation which supports our people in so many ways. So Father, bless him this day. Bless him these days. In the holy name of Jesus, we offer our prayers. And God's people said, Amen. 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 Okay, no one, let's step out of here. Be, be careful as you step out. I know I've got a couple of questions I need to ask you, and then we'll let you go change your clothes. As members of Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? And if you'll do that, you'll say, I will. As a member of this congregation, will you be faithful to participate in this ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? And if you'll do that, you'll say, I will. 
Friends, if you'll join me once again in your bulletin insert or on the words as we do this combination, welcome to Noah. Members of the household of God, I commend these person, this person to you, love and care. Do all in your power to increase his faith, confirm his hope, and perfect him in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you welcome Noah this morning? And we're going to allow Noah an opportunity to go down and change, put on some dry clothes, but he will be here at the end of the service down front. I encourage you to come and greet him and welcome him as a member of our church. Parents, the children will be in the gym for Children's Church, so you can pick them up there following the service. These past few weeks, we've been talking about things that are hidden, stories that are hidden, people who are hidden. And in today's scripture lesson from the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus talks about some things that are hidden. Jesus jumps on the theme Himself. So we'll be looking at Matthew chapter 13, verses 33 to 35, and then verses 44 to 46. Would you hear the word of the Lord? He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast, which a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until it was all leavened. Jesus told the crowds all these things in parables. Without a parable, he told them nothing. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth to speak in parables. I will proclaim what has been hidden since the foundation of the world. And then verse 44 and following. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in the field, which a man found and reburied. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of new life, here we are in your presence. The God who is with us through the midst of all of our chaos and our sin and our hiding. The God who takes hidden things and makes them new. See us today. Speak to our hearts and our lives that we may be fully and completely yours. Come, Holy Spirit. Come. Amen. So in today's scripture passage, Jesus talks about three hidden things. He says that the kingdom of heaven is like yeast hidden in three measures of flour. He talks about how, indeed, that what has been hidden since the beginning of the world, he is making known. And he talks about a treasure hidden in a field which someone finds and gives everything up to be able to have it. Now, when Jesus is talking about the kingdom of heaven here, he is talking about more than just heaven as this place that we will be going someday in the future when we pass on something otherworldly. Indeed, in Luke's gospel, which is aimed at the Gentiles, us, instead of Matthew's gospel, which Jewish readers would have read, Jewish readers who didn't like to say the name of God aloud, in Luke it reads the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, they are the same, and they represent to us the place and the way, the world in which we can imagine that God really does reign and things really are done God's way. 
where things look like they should in our lives, in our society, in our world, the answer to our prayer when we pray that the kingdom of God, that God's will may be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is what Jesus is talking about when he talks about the kingdom of heaven. And it may seem like a big concept to us, so Jesus takes us first to ordinary places to explain it to us. We go to the kitchen with Jesus to make bread. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of flour until it was all leavened. And after that, Jesus says that he is declaring in these parables, these stories that he is telling and proclaiming what has been hidden since the foundation of the very world. He declares what has been hidden. Now, when we first started this series off, Pastor Lolita, we went very back to the very beginning. We went back to the Garden of Eden and Adam and Eve and how sin came into the world and then they hid from God, right? They were suddenly aware of more than they needed to know and they hid from God. And that hiding has been going on ever since, hasn't it? Humanity, all of us, we have tried to hide from God. We have realized our shame, our sin, our guilt. We realize that we haven't done things God way, God's way or listened to God. We haven't acted like we were living in God's kingdom. And so we are still trying to hide. And you know, when you are hiding from somebody for long enough, after a while in your hiding, it begins to feel like you're not the one hiding, but the other person is the one hiding. Ever had a game of hide and go seek go on too long and no one ever found you and it felt like the person supposed to be finding you was indeed the one hiding and not you? Well, that's kind of the way it is with humanity and God. We have been hiding from God for so long that it seems to us at times that God and God's way of doing things are hidden from us. And it is into this picture that Jesus steps. And Jesus says that I will reveal what is hidden. We have in our hiding believed God to be the one who is hidden. And Jesus is stepping up to reveal God and God's way. The kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God. And truly Jesus reveals God because Jesus is God here with us. God in human flesh. God among us. And when he tells these stories, when he says the kingdom of heaven is like this, Jesus is finding us in this game of hide and go seek when we have remained hiding too long. Jesus is revealing to us the God who it seems like is hidden. The God whose way and will we haven't seen so much. And so it is that Jesus is revealing what has seemed to be hidden since the beginning of the world, that Jesus is the one through which we look at the rest of the world and we understand it. You ever read through the Old Testament and wondered what all those stories meant and what this could possibly mean now? Well, when we look at them, we also look at Jesus. Jesus being the one who is the center of the way we read our scriptures. Jesus is the one who sets the tone for how we understand our faith. Yea, Jesus is even the one who understands how we understand, who helps us understand life itself. Jesus is the center who reveals God and God's way in which we are called to live. I'll speak in parables. Jesus says, and I will reveal what has been hidden since the foundation of the world. In that first parable, Jesus talks about the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God being like yeast hidden in flour until it was all leavened, until it all rose up. You know, yeast is something that we can barely see. It's tiny. It gets mixed in with flour. This three measures of flour is an immense amount of flour, enough to feed a huge family at Thanksgiving and more. 
And yet these tiny little things that we cannot see, this yeast is what leavens the whole bread and makes the whole thing rise up and transform into something different. The kingdom of heaven is like that. God's work among us is like that. Sometimes it seems so small that we can barely see it. Sometimes it seems hidden to us, but God is at work in the world, making all things rise up, making everything transformed into something new and useful and good, like fresh baked bread. Last week, in our story from the book of Samuel, Pastor Lolita talked about how the idol Dagon fell down before the Ark of the Covenant of God and how everything all falls down in the presence of Almighty God. And brothers and sisters, if God causes all of our idols to fall down in the same way the kingdom of heaven, God's work among us, causes all of us to rise up together like leaven in bread. We are transformed because of Jesus. This is at the very center of the gospel, isn't it? That individuals, that people are transformed by meeting Jesus. This Jesus that they never see with their eyes and yet transforms people, turns bad people into good people, sinners into saints, broken people into whole people. When we meet with Jesus, the scripture says, if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. The kingdom of God is at work in us, transforming us as individuals and at work in us as individuals to be the leaven that causes us all to rise up in God's power. The work of the kingdom of heaven, the work of the church, the work of God's people over time has indeed transformed things in our world as well. Sometimes it seems hidden to us because it's too close to us. We value deeply our children, don't we? And we do anything we can to take care of them and bless them. We remember that Jesus came and blessed children. We bring them to the Lord. But lest we forget that that's because of the kingdom of heaven working like leaven in the world. In Jesus' time, as we see from the stories, children were not welcomed. Children were property. They were not loved. They were an inconvenience. They weren't really people. But the kingdom of God has worked like leaven to transform the way we treat children, and we could go on because it has changed so many things in our society. It has helped to raise up the role of women. It has helped to put a value on people who are broken or sick or ill or neglected or aged or weak that weren't there before. Christianity has changed the way that we care for the poor and the weak and all of us. It's 11 in our society that we might all rise together and we can be like that too jesus can change our lives what we just celebrated in noah's life and in the croft family life bringing callan to be baptized we will see transformation in their lives because they have met up with jesus they will rise up and be transformed and together brothers and sisters Working towards God's kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, we can help everyone to rise around us as well in our community. Think of the things we do together to help our community rise up. We invest when nobody asks us to in making sure that we had a plan for tornado recovery in our community and that we staffed that and we provided space for it and we gave generously toward it so that our community might rise up. We provide our space and our people and our volunteers for things like chrysalis where young people can come and encounter God's love and we can rise up as a community in Jesus' transformation as well. There are many other examples of the ways in which you are together acting like yeast to rise up our community and our world and we thank you because it is making a difference. It might seem so small like yeast that you don't see it sometimes but Jesus is at work 
at work raising everybody up until the day in which our world looks like God's kingdom and as the New Testament says, every knee would bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus reveals what has been hidden, namely God and God's way. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that raises us all up. And what should be our response? The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and buried. And in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and seeks to buy that field. The kingdom of God is worth whatever we have to sacrifice to be a part of it. It's worth it because of the promise of life eternal. It's worth it because of a promise of life to the full now. It's worth it because we participate together in helping the whole world rise up. You know, thinking about this parable, about this man who finds something in the field, I think about all this uh, pipeline work that's going around in Madisonville right now. You know what I'm talking about, right? They're digging everywhere. And I can just imagine one of those pipeline workers digging, you know, on a vacant lot somewhere in town and puts his shovel down and finds, uh, you know, a couple of buried boxes full of gold bars, you know, like lots of money. And I can picture him taking the shovel back out, filling, filling the hole back up, and then doing whatever it took to buy the property so we could own also all the gold underneath it, right? You can see the person, even if they don't have any money, going with joy to sell his car, going with joy to sell all his possessions at a pawn shop, bartering away everything just to have enough money to buy a vacant lot. And whatever he sold, whatever he gave up, no car, no bike, no TV, no nothing left in his savings, it would all be worth it, right, to own that lot and those tens and thousands and lots of gold bars hidden there. You tracking me? That'd be a good decision, right? And in the same way, brothers and sisters, whatever God may call us, to give up whatever we need to lay down in order to buy that field where the kingdom of heaven is. Whatever we have to give up, it's worth it. It's worth it. Because what we find there, both in eternal life and life to the full, and our contribution to seeing the kingdom of God come, it is like it. Worth it. It's worth whatever God calls us pay. Now normally we uh, in the church if we want to try to understand something we may look at the life of you know a saint or somebody in the church's history who exemplifies what it means to live in a certain way. So give me a moment this morning as we think about this story to tell you about Saint Pauline. Now when I woke up yesterday morning the first thing I saw was a text message telling me that Miss Pauline had died. Now, Miss Pauline had been the trustee chair at one of my previous churches, and that was a big job at that church because they had a huge mid-century modern building that hadn't been maintained and was falling down and not a lot of money to fix it and no staff with which to do anything. So Miss Pauline in her 70s did whatever it took to keep that building open. She was always there, I probably saw her more than anybody else at the church, making sure that the glass got fixed or that the roof didn't cave in, and did mostly a good job managing the squirrel problem in the church balcony. But Miss Pauline had had a rough life. Her husband had abandoned her and her kids. She had raised her kids as a single mom. She never, as far as I could tell, had much money or very good health. But in the midst of it all, she had found Jesus, and it had changed her life dramatically. And when other people were making other decisions about their time, Miss Pauline was making different decisions because she had been willing to give it all up to follow Jesus. She made different decisions. 
And so if you can imagine, when the other women her age were wondering about where they were going to eat brunch after church on Sunday, Miss Pauline was dreaming up what she was going to cook for 100 people for a free community meal every Wednesday night on a volunteer basis. When other women were complaining, her age were complaining about where they were going to play cards in the church building and if their tables were going to be there, Miss Pauline was out collecting furniture from random people who were going to donate it so she could bring it and take it to refugee families and store it at the church so they had somewhere to sit and somewhere to eat dinner. When other women were complaining about crime in the world, Miss Pauline was organizing people in the church to go and do uh, spiritual revival weekends in the prison, like the Great Banquet, except for prisoners. She was letting herself in prison to talk to people on death row and offer them help. When other people in the church were complaining about people that were different than her, Miss Pauline was actively working and giving hugs to show that the racism that she'd grown up with in southern Mississippi didn't have any place in church. You see, she gave up what other people were hoping for. What if I'm honest, I'm hoping for sometimes too. You know, a nice place to eat, money enough to make it through, not have to worry about it, a nice retirement. She traded it all in because she had met Jesus in a powerful way, and she wanted everybody else to meet Jesus too. So whether she was collecting furniture for refugees or feeding hungry people or talking to the people who had been messed up by drugs and came into the church and nobody else had time for, she was there because she had found something in that field that was worth more than anything else. And she was willing to sell it all to find it. And I don't know what God might call on you to give up in order that you might be the sort of person who works in God's kingdom and makes everything rise up like fresh baked bread. Miss Pauline figured it out. I see so many of you who have figured it out. But God might keep asking. God might keep calling. What might you have to sell to find this treasure that is the kingdom of heaven? What might you have to give up to gain it all? Jesus said, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and reburied, and then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has, and he buys that field. Brothers and sisters, may we all rise as Jesus rose. And may we all be willing to give up whatever we have to give up that we might enjoy this treasure that is the kingdom of God together. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for your goodness and your love. Meet with us here in this place. Move on our hearts. Change our minds. Help us with joy. Give up whatever we've got to give up to follow you completely and fully this treasure, this pearl of great price. Come, Lord Jesus, may we be yours. Amen. Let's stand and sing together, O oh, four thousand tongues to sing.
friends, thank you for joining us for worship and being a part of our online experience. I want to remind you of a few things going on in life of the church. We are heading to Mar Park together for our church-wide picnic. We'll be there at 1230. We want to invite you to connect with us through our upcoming Wednesday Night Alive season. Classes begin August 24th. As we prepare to leave this space, I want to let you know how grateful I am for you, how much you mean to me. I'm so very glad that you chose to worship with us today. During today's sermon, Pastor John talked about the kingdom of heaven and how through several of Jesus' parables, we can get a glimpse of this hidden treasure and how we can give all that we have to be able to grasp it. Each week, we want to leave you with a question to reflect on. And if you wouldn't mind, write those reflections in the comments so we can connect. Here's today's question. So what is it like the man finding the treasure in the field and selling all that he had to get it? What is it that you might need to lay down or give up or part with in order to fully realize this treasure that is God's kingdom? What's that thing today for you? As we leave today, please receive this blessing. May the God of the kingdom of heaven the God who knows us and keeps us, the God who makes this beauty and this truth that has been hidden known. May that God in Jesus Christ keep you, bless you, and send you forth with purpose and meaning and grace. Go from this time of worship in God's love. Amen. Amen.